Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Forrest Wynn. He works for the Kentucky State University. Our sister organization there with Extension is the Extension State Specialist for Aquaculture. Forrest, you know, a lot of times we get calls this time of year and it kind of creeps up on some people where they're starting to see some green form on the outer edges of their pond or their whole pond might have this kind of green film. And most of the time, what are they looking at? Filamentous algae. This is hairy kind of growth that some people call it pond moss that'll grow up from the bottom of the pond, generally in the shallow areas of the pond around the shoreline. And it will actually leave the bottom of the pond and come to the surface and form mats. And eventually those mats will break away and float around on the surface of the pond, usually pushed by winds. It's hard to fish in. It, it, it gets all over your hooks. Obviously, swimming is an issue. Boating this year, it really took off probably in March because we had an early spring and the waters and the sunlight were pretty were, were pretty bright. And uh, so this year, we really got a jump on problematic algae cases, whereas other years, we might not see a whole lot till April. This year, we were getting a lot of calls in early March. Is it easier to control when it's just now getting started or is there a difference? It really is. Uh, we, we got caught a bit in this dilemma in that Copper sulfate, a lot of our algicides really aren't too effective uh, in water temperatures much under 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. The, the chemical reaction is slow enough, as you would see with some of your herbicides, that you, you don't get great efficacy in control. So that, that was a problem. But this being said, you can spot treat around pond edges when, when you first start seeing problems and try to keep it, try to keep it under control. Unfortunately, algae travels from one pond to another by spores and 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 with the wind, and uh, it, it's it's ongoing. And one algae bloom might die off, and uh, and two weeks later you might have another one. So it's something you kind of have to stay on. Again, using that rather tired analogy of weeding your garden, you know, you just you just kind of have to keep on it. In most cases, copper sulfate will work. It's worth a shot just from the standpoint in that it's it's uh, readily available. Uh, and for spot treatments, it can be mixed up in a small sprayer and sprayed on top of the mats of algae or the bloom and try to get the wand down around the mats too. Because this stuff, as I mentioned, comes up from the bottom. It can be persistent. And there are some species of algaes, variety of algaes that don't respond well to copper sulfate or, or it's not that effective. And, and there are other things we can try. There are peroxide-based algicides that were designed pretty much for cyanobacteria or what we call blue-green algae. Uh, diquat can be mixed with copper sulfate for more stubborn algae such as pythophoras, these sorts of things. Uh, and, and also there's some chelated coppers out there on the market as well, which are, are a little more effective on some of these this type of growth. We classify it into filamentous uh, branched algae, cara or branched algae, for instance, nitella. Uh, there are cyanobacterias, uh, the blue-green algae. There are euglenas. This is algae that can actually swim. So um, you know, there, there's a lot of a, a lot of growth out there that's a little different, and that we will see often in our small ponds uh, throughout the course of the summer. If you're using copper sulfate and it's not being effective, maybe we need to look to see what type of algae that is. Is that something that you can tell through a photo or do you have to actually see the sample? Yeah, through the photo, I actually, to, to some of it, it involves some, you know, looking under a microscope. Uh, some of these algaes have this, a rather stubborn sheath on it to protect the the filament itself. And and that that has to be penetrated in order to get gain efficacy. Uh, through using an algicide, but um, once water temperatures get up in the 80 degree range, uh, whole pond treatments, I don't generally recommend them because most people care about their fish and uh, can have a, a situation in which they can take too much plant material down at one time. Uh, these are fast acting chemicals and within a day or two, you can deplete the oxygen in the pond. Also, there is some copper toxicity depending on the water and you can have acute toxicity and kill fish from uh, you know, copper sulfate poisoning, if you will, for copper poisoning uh, if you add too much. Thanks for watching and have a great day.